ChatGPT just got a big upgrade, which is the ability to store memory. So now it could remember things between different chats inside of ChatGPT, not just in the same chat. And I have five really practical examples here that I want to share with you that you could apply inside of your own ChatGPT account. Now, they've been testing this inside of free ChatGPT accounts and plus ChatGPT accounts. Right now, I don't have it in my Teams ChatGPT account. I only have it in my ChatGPT plus subscription. And they just also send a message out saying this is not yet available in Europe. But test it out for yourself. See if it's available in your region. But to access it, all you have to do is press your profile name on the bottom, go to settings, and then go down here to personalization. If you don't have this tab right here, you don't have memory just yet on your account. So it will be rolling out gradually. They've been talking about this for a few months now and have been testing it. But today it did roll out to all plus accounts in the US and some other regions not available in Europe and Korea right now. And by default, it's on the green toggle. So it should be on. So the memory is available right now inside of my ChatGPT accounts. If I decide to turn it off, I could always go ahead and click this on and turn it off. And if I want to manage memories that are stored, I could always press manage over here, which I'll show you in a minute. And we still have custom instructions, so they haven't removed this yet. But in some way, this was like memory. So you could tell ChatGPT things about you to remember. And the way you like it to respond, you could also give it instructions there. And every time you have a chat, it will remember this information. Now, memory takes it to a whole new level. So you could actually use it in combination with these custom instructions. So I have a different video in custom instructions, so I won't go through it here. And I noticed down here, they also brought this back GPT capabilities. So you could now turn off web browsing if you want. You could turn off access to Dolly and Code Interpreter. Again, not related to memory, but I did find this interesting down here. And before I show you the five practical examples, you could also click this chat GPT-4 option up here and turn on temporary chats. And what this allows you to do is basically have a chat with ChatGPT that doesn't access memory. So you don't have to go toggle off memory if you want to go ahead and use it without any memory. You could just go ahead and use temporary chat when you're done. Just go ahead and turn this on. Temporary chat is a way of using a kind of an incognito window where it doesn't have any reference to previous conversation in the memory tab. Okay, the very first practical example I want to show you is I want to tell ChatGPT memory all kinds of different things about my work history. Here's a really easy way to do that. If you have a LinkedIn profile, you could go to your LinkedIn profile, or if you have a resume, you could also use that. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot right over here. I'm going to include my name, my title, and I'll take a screenshot of my recent work history. I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years, so this is going to pull that in. I'll go back to ChatGPT. Now I'm going to go ahead and upload that picture. And I'm going to say this is my bio and work history. Commit this to memory. So ChatGPT4 has vision capabilities. So you could see what's in the screenshot. You could read all the text. And now if I go to personalization again and press manage memory. And right here is pulled in all the information based on the order that it was on that screenshot from LinkedIn. So I'm the CEO of Skill Leap AI since... April 2023 in Chicago. It has all the information, even links to my IMDb page from my filmmaking careers. And it's broken this up into different memories. So it's not just one big chunk of memory. So if I decide to delete something, let's say I don't want this one, I could just press delete memory and it's going to delete that very specific memory that it pulled in from that screenshot. So anywhere you have information where you could take a screenshot and pull it into ChatGPT, inside of its memory bank, this is a really useful way to do it in just one click. Okay, now if I start a new chat and say, what's my current job? It will know that information about me. So if I'm replying to an email, for example, it's gonna have this context. So it will put together a current signature, for example, right? Now I have two active jobs on LinkedIn, so I have to actually update it, but it's pulled in both of those active jobs here based on the memory. Now, let me show you a really useful shortcut here with this next memory application. So a lot of times I'll take a large amount of text. It could be something I wrote. It could be a video transcript directly from YouTube and I repurpose it. I may turn it into a blog post or some kind of other type of post on social media. This is a way that's going to save you a ton of time. And I'll put this prompt in the description so you could copy and paste. Always make sure this is a little bit more fine tuned for your use case. But every time I type this, and this could be any type of shortcut. Okay, mine I just put in this format, but basically blog. 
I want you to take the text that I paste and turn it into a blog post. And then this is a little bit of extra. And usually my prompt for this is longer. So I'm going to probably add that with a little bit more context. It needs to be fifth grade reading level, educational, but friendly tone, have H1 and H2 tags and SEO friendly. Okay, so let me send this out. This time I'm not even going to say commit to memory because it usually knows from the context of how you talk to it. You see it says memory is updating. You don't have to always say commit to memory or story memory. Usually it knows to do that. But now it's been updated. And a lot of times when it does that, by the way, you could manage your memories from this tab over here too, which takes us back to the same place. So this is a really nice way to jump back and forth between managing your memories and adding memories. But now look what I could do. I could type in blog, okay? Just the way, the same exact formatting right over here. I don't wanna use the word blog, so I will put something behind it, semicolons, parentheses, whatever you want, because otherwise I do use the word blog sometimes in conversation. Now I just have to paste some text. So let me go to my YouTube video. And this YouTube video, if you click usually on YouTube videos, they have a show transcript section. They, they pulled the transcript here. I'm going to hide the time code. And here is my own transcript. So I'm going to take it. But I want to basically turn this into a blog post for SEO purposes, not just YouTube. I copied that whole text. And I'll go back here, right? I could upload a document too. So if you have a PDF or a Word doc, in this case, that transcript was fine. And I'll send it out. And look at this. It didn't have any conversations with me. It used the prompt. It's basically now storing my prompt. I have a shortcut, blog. And every time I type in blog and upload a PDF, upload a doc, upload any type of transcript from YouTube, it's going to give me exactly what I'm looking for. This is the H1 heading that I was asking for. This is the H2 headings I was asking for. It's SEO friendly, right? And it's going to go to work just like this. And when it's done, I could just copy and paste it into a blog post or just go ahead and put my own manual finishing touches to it to get it ready to be posted. Let me just see if you could do this from a screenshot too. So I'll type in blog, use a screenshot. Let's see what happens there. Oh, wow, this worked pretty well too. So I typed in just blog, that's all I wrote. I added that screenshot that I used in example one and look at that, it's pretty good. <laughs> it has the H1 heading, it has the subheadings here and it is writing it at the reading level that I told it to, fifth grade reading level, it looks like just from looking at a lot of chat GPT text, very useful. Okay, this one's gonna be handy for a lot of different people for a lot of different applications. Every time I type headline, I want you to analyze the headline I paste and give me five alternatives for it. This is probably one of the most common ways people use ChatGPT to come up with alternatives to text. So this could be a headline for an email. In this case, it's a headline for my website. So I've been A-B testing the headline that goes on the homepage of skillleap.ai. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this headline and let me go ahead and just store this in memory. So I just have to send this before I copy that headline over. It's updating the memory, okay? So now just for the sake of showing you that this works in a new chat, I'm gonna open a new chat and let's type in this time, let's type in headline and let's type in that one headline. Okay, let's send that out. And just like that, here's five alternative headlines. Okay, very good. Empower new career opportunities with essential AI skills, fast track your career growth by learning AI skills. So I could, again, take one of these or two of these and tested, A-B tested one versus the other one, the current one I have, and see which one works better, which I'm in the, in the process of doing right now. I was just using a custom GPT that I had built to do this, but now I could just use this quick shortcut inside of my memory, this headline shortcut, and do the same thing, and it's gonna remember that across all my chats. Now we have blog, we have headlines, we could take a screenshot and do the exact same thing with it, just taking the screenshot of the website, dropping that in instead of typing out the headline. Okay, here's the next one. I'm gonna ask it to never use this word when responding, and I'm gonna ask it to commit it to memory, delve. Okay, so for some reason, ChatGPT, based on its training data, uses the word delve more than any other word that I've come across, and in conversation, in any blog I read, I really never use the word delve personally, and I really never even come across it. So every time I see delve, it's a clear giveaway that they're using ChatGPT or some other AI tool to write. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to memory. Okay, it looks like the first time I said write a sentence with the word delve, it did do that. And I said, remember I told you never use that word. And then when I said write a sentence to incorporate the word delve, 
Since I've committed to not using the word in my response, here's an alternative sentence. And he went and actually gave me an alternative that didn't have delve. And a few other times that I tried this, sometimes you would get it the first time, but sometimes you had to have a test here, basically saying, forcing it to use the word. And then eventually it would refuse to use the word after a couple back and forth. And it is inside of the memory bank now. So I would recommend if you have words that you really don't like, that you see ChatGPT using over and over again, add it here in memory and add it in custom instruction in the second box to say never use these words. I'll make a dedicated video to share with you all the different words that I've put together and excluding them from ChatGPT. But Delve is one that I recommend you do right now. And I use ChatGPT all the time to reply to emails. So you could do the same thing with the shortcut I showed you. But another thing you could do is here's an email signature. Every time you reply to an email, make sure you add this email signature. And this is where you would add your name and your title or whatever else you want, phone number in your email signature. And it's going to add that to memory. So those kind of things that you do all the time with ChatGPT, email reply, headlines, taking and repurposing text, writing blogs, whatever the case may be, it makes sense to create that little shortcut for yourself with your custom set of instructions for it. So that was basically my prompt. Every time before, I was copy and pasting that prompt from a notes app. Now I have a little shortcut. It's inside of the memory bank, a huge time saver now. And this is also coming to custom GPTs, which is going to completely change how people will interact with custom GPTs now that they could pull in from that person's memory bank and be more customized and more helpful. It is not yet available for custom GPTs. And if you're not familiar with custom GPTs, I have a beginner friendly video about custom GPTs, so I'll link that here to watch next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.